We now move into facet four of the eight facets of life by Chris Conley. This one has to do with your present quality of life as well as your future. We're talking about health and in this next segment, Chris offers some simple but important life changes you can make that are keys to enjoying life not only now, but for many years to come. We've already talked about personal development, family and relationships, and now we're going to talk a little bit about health and health both being physical and mental. I think a lot of what we've talked about with relationships is about the mental health, mm -hmm. but physical health is right there and just as important. It certainly is. And physical health kind of touches on everything and it's, it's a commitment more than anything else. Yeah, I think, you know, it's a way of life. When we think about diet, it's all about what we can't do. So if we think about it's a way of life, it's, I, I remember someone making a comment, I'm not on a diet, I'm just holding myself accountable for what I eat. And if, if you think about it, then it's perfectly okay to, to have that pizza one night if you're gonna make up for it in the next couple of days, maybe mm -hmm. increase your workout or what have you. But it's, <clears throat> health is an area that we all wanna do better in. How can we go about making sure we hold ourselves accountable? Well, the big thing is, like you say, we're not going to neglect having fun. Uh, we're going to eat the foods we enjoy. It's just a matter of uh, being educated, which I don't think that's a problem. It's more about the discipline that I'm going to give in today, but I'm going to be right back on it tomorrow. You know, it's amazing how many of the, the simple truths we learned many, many years ago that as we grow older and are more educated, we find out those are actually pretty good truths. Right. And one of those is, is moderation, that you can have a little bit of everything or anything as long as you do it in moderation. Exactly. As we, we look at uh, health, it's a way of life. And also the other thing is, you know, it, it's often easy to go, well, I can start that diet next week. I can start that workout regime next month. I, I need to get over this. I need to get over that before I can do anything. And those are really just excuses. Exactly. And, and I think that's what we fight, especially with the health aspect. Um, the trouble is many of the decisions we make won't kill us today, but they have devastating consequences long term. So I hear people talk about baby steps and I buy into that completely because we, we need to make healthy choices. And as we make them, they become more ingrained to make that lifestyle change. Well, and you look at something like high blood pressure, which is a, a serious problem throughout the country. And that is certainly one of those things where you can have high blood pressure for, for decades and go, well, I, I feel okay. I don't have any <clears throat> exterior signs. But what is it doing? It's, it's shaving off years at the end of your life. And it's something that some small steps can, can help maybe extend your life. Right. I, I remember uh, The Biggest Loser. I, I don't watch it anymore. But at one time, the contestants would be told you're 26, but you've got the body of a 60 year old. And that was always seemed to be earth shattering, you know, and, and an emotional time for them to hear that. But then it was on the flip side, uh, six months later, they were told that now they're three years younger than their actual chronological age. And a lot of that goes back to <clears throat> perhaps we don't have the long view of life that we need to. You know, <laughs> It's easy to say this generation, this current generation wants to live for the now, but mm -hmm. I think they've been saying that for 60, 70 years that people only are concerned about living for the now and they aren't holding themselves accountable for what could happen down the road. Right. Um, you know, I, I remember the commercial, pay me now or pay me later, and I think it was a Midas commercial, but that's, I think that goes right along with what we're talking about, that we can do what we want today, but there's going to be consequences down the road. So. Um, we know as we age, it doesn't get any easier. So if we're not going to take care of ourselves at this point, it's only going to make it more difficult down the road. You know, in, in your eight facets of life, you kind of have a, of a diagram of them in a circle, which kind of shows that they're all interrelated. Mm -hmm. And health certainly touches on personal development, touches on family, touches on relationships, because let's face it, if, if our health is going to preclude us from having a relationship, that certainly is a reason to, to get the health in better balance. Right. There's a saying that goes, a man with a toothache cannot be in love, basically meaning that if, you, if you're in pain, you can't think about anything else. So it's not to say it's the most important because as you mentioned, they're all intertwined, but uh, health is something we've got to take care of to be there for others. What are some other tips you have for, for folks who are looking <clears throat> to, to better their health? Yeah, I think the baby steps issue is number one, um, but I heard Dr. Oz and I heard this other expert say that they thought that the number one thing that people could change right now is sleep. Uh, the fact that we're not well rested uh, leads us to make worse choices with our diet. We might grab some sugary food or starchy food, you know, to give us that emotional boost. 
Uh, a second thing was water, water intake. Um, I think if we get less of the sugary drinks and we can get used to drinking water, um, that's definitely a plus. And then the third item I would say would be just walking. Um, and those are all really easy things to do. The thing is, these are simple, but they're not easy. You know, not easy to maintain and not easy to always tell ourselves that this is what I need to do regularly. You know, it's, it's easy to lose weight. All you have to do is exercise more and eat less. Mm -hmm. Two simple steps, but the hard part is that commitment to continue to exercise more and eat less. Exactly. And, it, you know, it, if it's raining, we need to have a backup plan, you know. Maybe I can't get the same workout if I'm used to being outside, but there's something I could do in my house or later in the day or, you know, you just have to make those adjustments. So we've talked about personal development, we've talked about family, we've talked about relationships, and as we wrap up this discussion on health, you, you mentioned sleeping more, drinking more water, getting that regular routine. I, I would also add having an awareness of what works best for you, making sure you, what you're doing is what's going to work for you. Right, because if it is something that you enjoy, you're going to maintain it. So it can't be just because it worked for my aunt or my best friend that it's, it's my issue as well. All right, thank you very much, Chris Conley. And if you would like to have Chris <coughs> teach his eight facets of life to your organization or your group, he is available to workshop this topic. You can contact him at theconleys102 at gmail.com. You can also view our earlier episodes of The Eight Facets of Life on our website, faithandfriends.wtlw.com.